Scoping reviews are different. So along with the rise of, of systematic reviews that JBI and other organisations, this idea of bringing evidence to inform clinical decision making or clinical policy making, the systematic review uses processes, as I mentioned, critical appraisal and the like, and formal methods of synthesis to get a new measure, to say, does the, the direction, does this, is this going in the right direction? Is it beneficial? Is it better than the, than the alternative? Um, in that process, uh, and as a part of that, doing that has always led us on to other questions, other research that we should be doing, or potentially where we need more research. The scoping review has really reshifted some focus to that latter point and doing it more systematically. The scoping review, I think, can almost live in the realm of evidence-based health research, predominantly, rather than evidence-based health practice or evidence-based health care. And, and it is an incredibly important part of the process when we talk about investment, of, of, of where governments and organisations are indeed going to, to, to invest in terms of trying to, to, to um, expand our knowledge and our understanding of how processes and things actually work, uh, be it within health systems or to, to, to improve clinical outcomes and the like. Um, we need that type of research done in any particular field to then head us in the right direction. And I think that is that idea of creating a, a, a broader picture is really the realm of the scoping review that is quite distinct from that of the systematic review.